I just received this email. I got this email from YouTube. It says the YouTube team sent me a video. There are the changes in YouTube rules and policies. Check out the description. Seemingly from YouTube.com. No reply at YouTube.com. From YouTube. From YouTube. YouTube. Everything. It all seemed something like YouTube. But interestingly, there are some oddities to it. It says, hey, it's by the YouTube team and there are spaces between you and Tube, even in like, I don't know, the introduction here. And it says, look, this email has been sent to notify you of new monetization policies and new rules. We've sent you an official document. Please use the link below to download this document. The document is also attached to the email. It's intended for private access only, which is weird. Here's a password, here's a download link, and a warning. You have seven days to review and send a reply letter, otherwise your access will be restricted to our service. As in, loading new videos, edit old videos, getting monetization, getting monetization money earned, Best wishes, YouTube team. And then there are two attachments. Seemingly a video of, uh, that's the Google CEO, I think, right? Something? And a YouTube team.zip file. Now, I don't know about you, but this is kind of getting my spidey senses tingling. Something feels a little bit weird about this email. We can do some due diligence here, right? This YouTube team is a link. Let's go check out, hey, what the heck that channel might be. Oh, okay. It's been... <laughs> terminated due to violation of YouTube policy, prohibiting impersonation, impersonating YouTube. <laughs> the video that's linked here in the middle and included in the, like the attachment, right? So to speak, is a YouTube video that is also privated and uh, not real. I don't know, can I go to that link? Is that a real thing? Clicking on it to open it within YouTube, no, the video is unavailable and now it's private, okay. Now take a look, I've actually received two of these emails, uh, one just previously a couple days ago that was YouTube team without a space in the middle of it and a different icon for the account. Uh, same exact sort of setup, different password, different link to download this file here, same video. Uh, let me go see if this account is alive. Oh, of course, here it is. The old YouTube team at YT team 3432. <laughs> Let's take a look at that video in the middle here. Also unavailable, that video is private. So we have two different downloads to be able to work with and play with. However, I do want to note, this is all from no reply at youtube.com. And yet, if I take a look at a real, legitimate, like, YouTube email, hey, something with YouTube music, hey, we've actually got some, I don't know, the, the shorts revenue that's coming up, these are all from no hyphen reply youtube.com youtube music here's a no reply youtube.com however i get other emails from youtube like real genuine youtube that are no reply without a hyphen like here are a couple of the comment responses hey we can just click on the top one dig in this it's a response to a comment on network chucks videos with of course whatever stupid telegram i don't know scam that that is side note would really love if we could try to fix that youtube but look this is no reply at youtube.com no hyphen here. So what we could do if we actually go back to the other weird looking emails, you can go take a look at show original. I don't know if my face is in the way here, but clicking on one of those buttons, it will give you, hey, here's the raw like .eml file format set up with the genuine, hey, actual source to the email. All the headers that are for SMTP protocols, IMAP pop, I don't know. I'm not an email guru by any means. But if I control F to look for like from to see where it's sent from, it all seems to end up Alluding to Google things, right? Scout camp bounces google.com. I don't know. There's another one that's exactly that. It's all allegedly from everything that relates to YouTube. I know you can sort of like fake or masquerade and have a different setup and structure here for the email from address. Like you can spoof that, but I thought, I don't know, digging into the source, you very well could find something else. Uh, the SPF, the DKIM, the DMARC, all these other email things. I'm not super smart on those. They all seem to be good. They're passing with green lights, all from the domain youtube.com. So I'm gonna fall on my sword here. I don't know if I'm misunderstanding. I, I would love to be schooled on this, please help educate me. If you could let me know in the comments what you think. I don't know if this is like seemingly actual from youtube.com domains or uh, I want to learn. Let me know. Anyway, let's get to the fun stuff. Let's see if we can dig into this uh, attachment here. Looks like we have a Google Drive link uh, download that's going to confirm and includes the ID. All we need to do is fire this thing up. However, seven days to review and send a reply letter, that sort of urgency just sounds like a scam, just sounds like a phishing email. And uh, let's go dig into this and see what it actually is. I'm going to jump into a virtual machine here. I'm going to be in Remnux. I'm going to be in Linux, uh, the reverse engineering malware Linux distribution. I'm going to 
fire up my web browser and see if I can download this. I'll paste the link in here and it should automatically trigger the download apparently with a YouTube team, uh, seven megs. Go ahead and save this file. I'll get my terminal open here. I'll full screen this and zoom in a little bit. Let's make a directory for YouTube scam. Can I hop over to that directory and move from what would be the downloads? I think it puts it in the home directory with Firefox. Uh, YouTube team dot zip. It is, in fact, a zip file, so at least it has that going for itself. Let's try to unzip this file. It does, however, need a password. And I can see it right there. Ooh, look at that little uh, dot .screensaver extension. That is not a actual PDF document or file or, I don't know, something that we could kind of view in Microsoft Word or whatever. That's going to actually be an executable that could be ran on Windows. That is a screensaver file. However, I have said it and misspoken it before for a screenshot file. Got to apologize. Everyone was roasting me in the Network Chuck video like, you idiot. It's a screensaver file, not a screenshot file. Look, dude, I've been up for I don't know how long. <laughs> Let's go grab that password. It is 428793. I'll paste that in here. Now it is going to head and inflate it. We'll pull it out of the zip file, taking a long time. This is probably gonna be a big beefy file. Uh, and let's go see. We've got our YouTube team directory here and there is our YouTube team policy.scr. Uh, that is in fact an executable. PE32 plus executable GUI x64 for Windows. Now I'm curious, what is the hash of this? Because because we have a whole nother sample to be able to play with, keep in mind. There was a second email that I received and the SHA-256 sum of this, while it takes a long time, is 4EAB blah blah blah. Uh, now, how big is this file again? Oh, 700 megabytes. <laughs> Okay, probably super duper bloated, so a regular antivirus or automated security solution can't dig into it, especially with a password protected zip file. The Defender, like Windows Defender or other antivirus, whatever you happen to be rocking, probably won't dig into it because it's encrypted to start and then ginormous and bloated once you pull it out. Let me go back and grab the older one with a previous link and different password here, 95681. We'll copy this link and we'll go grab it within Remnux. New link, different file to download. Whoa, interesting. That actually has a whole nother file name to it that includes the password in it. Uh, let me move back to the original directory. And what did that thing start with? Looks like it has an actual colon in there. Password from archive 9561. Google modified policy rules. And yeah, let's put it in this directory. Let's go ahead and unzip that garbage. And uh, the password, as I know, is 95681. So my face is in the way. Uh, let me just go ahead and enter that now. Interesting that rules is with a capital I. <laughs> it just looks so bad. Such a scam. Ah, invalid zip file with overlapped components. Possible zip bomb. Sketch. What if I use a uh, 7-zip to extract that? I'll paste in and autocomplete that. Yes, I would like to replace the existing file. So that's an A and I need to enter the password. Slap that in again. And then it'll try to cruise through it. Uh, my terminal screen is, is muffed up, so that was a little bit odd. But okay, I found it. Here's our Google modified policy rules. Why can't I change directory into that? I couldn't autocomplete that for some reason. Hello? There it is. Let's run file on that. And of course, yet again, it is an executable. It is a screen saver file. You can see the extension here. Uh, that is for 32-bit. This is a, an i386 in this case. Stripped to avoid leaving the PDB behind. Um, we could probably do some stupid dumb reconnaissance on these things. Let me go back to the original one. Let me start with our YouTube team, YouTube team policy. But wait, before we get too much further in the deep dive analysis, please let me give some special shout outs to today's sponsor, IT Pro from ACI Learning. I learned just about everything that I know in tech from watching videos online. I love to see demonstrations and be able to really see and visualize concepts. Honestly, video has always been my preferred way of learning. And since you're here watching this video, it probably is for you too. So one of the greatest resources that I use to learn more about this industry is IT Pro TV. Now, IT Pro from ACI Learning. Even my friends would have their videos up on the TV in the living room. IT Pro from ACI Learning is your online training solution for cybersecurity and information technology. Check out IT Pro's binge-worthy content and hands-on virtual labs and certification practice tests. With IT Pro, you don't just get a pile of videos. 
you get a training partner who supports you through every step of your IT career. Whether it's system administration, industry certifications, networking, ethical hacking, or any aspect of our line of work, IT Pro has great training and education ready and available for you. And I honestly just love what they do. I spend a lot of time with them at security conferences, and they have some great folks as part of their crew, like Daniel Lowry and tons of other great educators. It's all on demand, it's all accessible, and it's all top tier quality. Give IT Pro from ACI Learning a try with my link in the video description and use promo code JOHN30 for 30% off your first month or year of learning. You'll feel right at home with the people on the team and you'll love what you're learning. Huge thanks to IT Pro from ACI Learning for sponsoring this video. Getting back into it, we know that this one, 699 megabytes. I don't know, the other one, the Google one was about a gig, which is wild. Uh, so what we might be able to do is take a quick look at this thing in a hex editor, uh, or we could use DIE, detect it easy, and uh, we'll note, look, of course, it is just a MZ header for a regular PE executable. However, you might catch, if you scroll down just a smidge, there is... Themida? Themida? I always don't know how to pronounce it, uh, but it's one of those packers or obfuscators. And if we Google, we could go track it down. Advanced Windows Software Protection System. If you aren't familiar, when an application is created, the compiler will compile the application code into several object files. You might be able to use a disassembler or a decompiler or try to track down reverse engineering what the application does, but when software protectors are in place, it does some shenanigans that will, I don't know, manipulate it, obfuscate it, do some changes to set up a little bit of a shield that encrypts parts of the application and protects it from a lot of that further analysis and investigation with those decompilers disassemblers, etc. Something that we might be able to do is try and unpack it with some easy tools. Like, hey, with something that might be able to work around this little shield and software protector. Unpack Me is one awesome example of this put together by the sweet folks over at OA Labs, Open Analysis Labs, Open Analysis Live, all the incredible stuff that they do. Yeah, Open Analysis Inc. And they're super smart fellows, way, way smarter than me. Uh, but if we try to go ahead and use this thing, now I'm going to go ahead and log in, but no Note, unpack me does not attempt to identify any of the specific packers. They use different generic unpacking techniques in a weird recursive way. Super cool, maybe a lot like Katana in that CTF sense. Unpacked children will always be present here. We could go ahead and sign in with all this. So now that I am signed in, we can go ahead and upload the file. We can go ahead and drop our file here to unpack it. And well, we have 100 megabytes as a maximum size. So with 100 megabytes as our capped size, Size, we might need to pivot. Uh, we'll try a different route. Hey, you know what? I'm going to hop over into Flare, uh, where I do have these executables uh, downloaded. I've created the YouTube scam folder, and I've re-downloaded these, and I actually see an interesting sort of, I don't know, different naming convention or file name for what the Google modified rules and policy file was, separate from the YouTube team one, uh, which presumably is why I couldn't tab complete with the letter O. Um, but hey, there is our executable. Again, still the the screensaver file, note that it has the icon of a PDF to look like a document and a giant file here. So we could open this with DIE or Detect It Easy or Die, uh, as I've alluded to earlier, but I will note I'm in an old installation of Flare and running an old version of Detect It Easy that doesn't have some cool, sweet functionality and some features that I would love to be able to showcase. So I am going to go ahead and see if I can download or update the new version of Detect It Easy. So if I Google Detect It Easy, Hey, we've got the GitHub repository here, uh, and this is the online resource for Detect It Easy. You can see all of the syntax and setup here. Note that they do have a new extractor in 3.0.7. You can go ahead and download it from the engine releases that's linked here, and that will give you all of the options to whether install it for Ubuntu or Linux or portable versions for Mac or for Windows. I'm going to go ahead and grab the 64-bit one for Windows and download this. Now, in my downloads folder, I'm just going to go ahead and extract with 7-zip. And now that I've opened it up, I'm going to go ahead and browse to 
my desktop where I do have the YouTube scam files here. Let's open up the YouTube policy one to begin with. Uh, you know, I, I'm interested in both, but let's try to see where we have issues that we'll run into regardless. Okay, so it looks like we do have the Themida or Themida, however you wanna say that protector, uh, the overlay that is the binary that we could deal with. But if I toggle over to the advanced mode, now there is an extractor that I can dig into. So I'm curious if this will be able to cut up different pieces of the payloads or at least remove all the fluff that pads this thing to like 700 megabytes or a gig in the other example. And I wonder if one of those might be able to then go into unpack me to keep things easy for us. So I will let this go ahead and run, cruise through it, extract whatever it takes. Found a couple options here. Looks like a resource with the PNG file, uh, the actual or some other given executables. Uh, and let's just dump all here. I'll save that in a new direct we can call it extracted and then I'll go ahead and select that folder and that should save them all hopefully if I bounce back to it there is the extracted section now okay we have the PNG image that is literally an image of just the PDF icon nice dumb a DLL file and an executable file and this one is only four or five megabytes so that we could work with we also have a DLL file that's present that is just 10 or so kilobytes. And I'm curious now, hey, can we use Detect It Easy on the other binary? Let's see if that one actually has the Themeta protector, Themeta protector. I don't think I checked that one in strings just a moment ago. Now that's a gig, so it's gonna take a little bit of time to cut up. Ooh, but that one might have a little bit more runway for us because we're not gonna be up against the other uh, Themeta or Themeta. So let me hit the extractor one more time, rip through these. This might take even longer considering it's like double the size. And there we go. Now we have that same, PNG image and the other potentially original binary. Let's go ahead and dump all and create a new extracted folder one more time. Now, a significantly smaller binary of just two and a half megabytes. Cool. So we can pop these into unpack.me. I'll go ahead and log in again. Slap in the password here. And now let's try to unpack these. First, let's see if the Themeda one can be cut up. Let's open the executable file here. Only five megabytes to start with. Let's see what it can rip through. While that's doing its thing, let me upload the others. Uh, I do wanna give it that DLL file that might've been included along with it. And I am going to try the other, the sample Google modified, whatever weird characters are in this. Uh, we just have the executable to work with on that one. And that does not have Themida or Themida or whatever. Now, if I can bounce over to the history tab, let's see. Okay, some of these are still cruising through it. However, some have been completed. Let's go see what we have here. Insights, it does determine, hey, there is a Themeda Packer here. Zooming in on the parent details. Uh, this is, I don't think anything extra. I don't think it was able to get another layer or anything out of it because maybe it just couldn't go past Femita and that commercial packer, that com commercial shield and protector. That is a little bit tough to cut through. There are some strings referenced though, some wide strings and also some ASCII strings. We can zoom in to see if there's anything interesting. However, we're just gonna be dealing with what? The packed rendition. So probably not a whole lot to pull out of here. There are a couple Win32 API functions though. So maybe that might at least give us some ideas. Oh, there's an interesting one here, Z development secure engine plugins master TLS helper. What? Uh, okay. There's a PDB file for that. But honestly, this is probably the very same PE file that we would have been dealing with anyway. So not a whole lot of runway left on that one. Let me see what else we were working with. We had the DLL file. Let's go see if that had any results for us. Unknown classification, likely not packed. Any details that we could dig into? Interestingly enough, a uh, couple of things, maybe some manifest versions, the same PDB path that we saw just a moment ago. Maybe we won't have the most runway with that one either. Ooh, however, we do have something worthwhile for the other Google one, the Google modified policies. Ooh, it looks like this has some really good details. Classification, malicious, generic packer, totally an info stealer as we should have expected. Tag seemingly is steel C. Um, that's been added to a whole lot of other binaries and samples, uh, 39 matches across some other samples that Unpack Me has seen in the past. Cruising back into the other page, looks like Steel C is a copycat of Vidar and Raccoon Info Stealers gaining in popularity. Uh, there's a reference here from Sequoia and Malpedia. Even lists a couple command and control frameworks, notes the RC4 key, was able to carve out the Steel C config file, IP addresses that it might end up reaching out to, 
Ooh, some miter attack techniques mentioned here for execution. Looks like it's going to try and access the peb, get the kernel 32 base address, parse the header, even defense evasion mechanisms, whether it's encoding data with XOR, RC4, as it was able to carve out that key just some time ago. Nice and easy for us. Referencing a base 64 string, all in that original sample. And there are some unpacked children here. Okay, so that was the parent, I think, that we started with, with weird file info. Internal name is Levels Curiosity Weeding Cesspool Fluting <laughs> Grotesquely. Here is some unpacked children for the Steeler config. This is a little bit interesting. There might be some more to dig through, whether Kappa's already tracking some stuff. Does have some YAR rules being matched for Steel C, and we should go explore what that Sequoia article describes. And here's the configuration. RC4 key as it's been able to be pulled out, the command and control IP, and decrypted strings that are going to end up referencing the Win32 API functions that it wants to call, or DLLs that it's gonna end up pulling these from. I'm curious if there are some other spots that it tries to reference on this command and control server. And here's the usual like info stealer style and structure, right? Hey, pulling out data out of program data, is trying to read from SQLite databases, uh, things that might have been storing cookies or sessions or session tokens, right, that could end up controlling the YouTube accounts, controlling any uh, potential websites that you happen to be logged into in your web browsers, whether it's Firefox, Chrome, et cetera, et cetera, and ends up exfiltrating all of this out. Telegrams in this list, talks, Steam, of course, you've seen these before, Discord tokens, so finally, let's go take a look at what Sequoia has to say about this thing. Steel C is a copycat of Vidar and Raccoon Info Stealer gaining in popularity as of February 2023. So very, very recent, goodness. Tracking this in January from some dark web shenanigans. Hey, similar to other info stealers like Redline, Raccoon, etc. Blog post digs into it, showcases some of the chatter on XSS, all in a language that I can't read. Usual info stealer tactics, hey, grabbing stuff from web browsers, browser extensions, etc. Also allows you to grab files. Interesting. So it seems like Plymouth is the user that ends up advertising this thing or trying to sell, hey, make a quick buck with this malware as a service option here. Obviously, always professional, hey, building up the business, gaining the trust of potential customers, giving away some weekly free tests. That's super cool for cyber criminals. And there is a super slick timeline as to, hey, when all this has been growing and developing and evolving as new features, they even have a dedicated Telegram channel. Ooh, we could probably dig into that. Okay, dumping a couple things into triage to get some other info, seeing some of the very same strings that we dug out with our Unpack Me, hunting around on Virus Total. And here are some of the details as to how it might do its communication with the command and control servers. Uh, some PCAP, Wireshark, the screenshots here where it is going to end up posting to that random PHP file extension as we've seen with all of the data that's probably already extracted. Uh, I will link this in the description for you more interested to read through it because I realize, hey, in a video, me trying to regurgitate it to you probably isn't all that interesting, especially as I'm scrolling down more and more and more. They are offering some interesting infection chains that folks are seeing. Uh, and ooh, look at this. YouTube videos on stolen accounts describing how to install crack software for free. Uh, actually not the same sort of setup that we saw. Originally, it's now been uh, YouTube emails uh, staging and kind of cruising this together. Are we seeing a different C2 than what they have seen in the past? Let's see, RIP address was 194552244. That is not present in the article here. Here is Malpedia's uh, info on this with a couple of links, references, collection of other articles that you could read about. Uh, but it is still C, at least this other sample, one of the two that we were looking at, similar to Vidar, Raccoon, etc. as we've been discussing. Looks like Sequoia has been owning the airspace on this, but oh, there's a part two to the conversation. I'll link this as well in the uh, description for the video here because they are cutting through all of that low-level assembly, the actual instructions that make this thing what it is. More than I could probably cram into a already very long video as it is. But for our last couple of fireworks, look, we should probably throw this into a dynamic sandbox. I could run it and like hook it up with like Procmon, you know, Proc Explorer, all the stupid, boring sys internal stuff. Not to say, not to trivialize that by any means, um, but just that it's slower than, you know, having something like any run or an already staged environment to be able to dig into all the sweet details here. So let me log in super quick. Okay, now it's firing stuff off. Uh, let me add a little bit of time here so we can keep emulating this. And looks like that is 
doing stuff. Whole lot of communications already, connections going out, threats are lighting up. Where is our C2 server that we just pulled? Here, here's sort of the 194 address. The threats that we're tracking though, hey, looks like it already noting Sequoia's steel C2 check-in, suspicious base 64 content and post requests, submitting a screenshot to the command and control and so it does genuinely take a screenshot. I saw that file name in strings, which was kind of weird. Whole lot of HTTP requests that we can see communicating back and forth to the command and control service. Let me check out more info to see everything that it might do. And man, it, as we should have expected, hey, lighten up. It is totally malware in this YouTube scam. Stealing credentials from web browsers, personal data, reading browser cookies. We can see those as we have. Searching for installed software, all of this regular reconnaissance. These HTTP requests, I'm sure are pretty interesting because like, look, Slapping up some of the executables here and there. Let me do a new task with the other one that we were not able to read and make sense of. Because it was packed by Themida, we could try to upload the big YouTube team file. That didn't work. Let's use the extracted one. Um, can it grab that DLL just fine? We can make this 64-bit this time, and let's fire it up. And goodness, looks like it's going to end up firing out a whole lot of regular, hey, ASP.NET .net stuff. Even uses the JSC, like the, what is that, the JavaScript? The JScript? work ilsm of course oh and there's the red line stealer as expected connects to a command and control server does usual info stealer crap network trojan detected for red line stealer communicating to that c2 server there so if we would have been able to cut through themida or themida we would have likely been able to dig out what that original dot net red line stealer were to be but at the end of the day look it's just another info stealer okay i'm sorry i've been rambling for forever and this was a long video but uh, I hope it was a little bit interesting, maybe getting some exposure to things that I haven't showcased before. Uh, Unpack.me is incredible. Unpack me. DIE, the detected easy, is something that we should always opt for, especially with their new extractor functionality. And at the end of the day, look, you're not going to receive an email from YouTube that says, here are changes that are made. Please respond in less than seven days or else you'll lose all access to your channel. That's just not realistic. It's not YouTube. It's clearly a scam, especially when you dig into it. The accounts are taken down. It's just not real. But that was this video. Thanks so much for hanging out. Hope you had fun. I'll see you in the next video. And please check out our sponsor, Tracking ACI Learning and IT Pro for this video. And uh, you know, you can learn a little bit of the fun stuff from them. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe.